Hey everyone, I'm Budget Nerd, and I'm back. Kaival reached out to me and asked if they could send over their new Cybovac E31 robot vacuum. And because I'm a total nerd, I said yes. So in this video, you guessed it, we'll see if it will leave its competition in the dust. Thanks everyone for making it past that pun. Here is the Kaival Cybovac E31. It's Kaival's flagship vacuum. Right now this model comes in at $280, but you can drop it to $250 with the coupon on Amazon. If it's good, it seems to be priced in a good spot. It claims to have gyroptic smart navigation, 2200 PA suction power, 150 minute battery life, smart home mapping, virtual no-go lines, the ability to control it with the app, and it also has an option to mop. Their E30 model seems to be the same, minus the mopping feature. For a few of the tests I'll do, I'll throw in my Ecovacs D-Bot Osmo 920. It's a much more expensive vacuum, three times more expensive, so I won't be doing many direct comparisons, but it will help us to get an idea of how the Kaival robot performs. Let's see what you get in the box. There are quite a few things in here. Here's the mopping container with its attached mop pad that you can remove to clean. Here's the dock that will charge it. You get a magnetic strip to prevent it from going anywhere you don't want it to go. So, so much for virtual no-go lines. These are literal no-go lines. You also get some sticky pads to keep the magnetic strip in place. You get a remote control, which is actually pretty cool. You get a manual, and you get an extra filter, which apparently doesn't excite me much. You get two AAA batteries for the controller, and here is the vacuum itself. I think it looks cool. You get two brushes, but one is a spare. You also get the power adapter for the dock and an extra mopping pad. So that's a lot of stuff. Let's take a closer look at the vacuum. It's shiny, and I like the blue highlight on the top. I think it looks nice, and it feels like it's made well. It's easy to press the orange latch to release the container as long as you use both hands, and it slides right out. There's only one brush on this vacuum, so flip it over and snap it on. While it's turned over, flip the power switch to turn it on, and once on, it will begin to contemplate its life of never-ending servitude. Setting up the dock is easy. Plug it in, wind up the cable if you want to, and set it down where you want it. It'll serve as your vacuum's home. While it charges, you can install the app. It's called Kyvol. You will use the app to connect the robot to your Wi-Fi and then add it to the app. The vacuum will only support 2.4 gigahertz. Inside the app, you get the options to set it up with Google Home or Alexa. You also get the option to start a cleaning cycle, send it to its charging dock, put it in spot mode, and see its status. You can change its name, check the status of the brushes and filter, check the network details, and update the vacuum. While the vacuum is doing your work for you, you can go to the app settings and change options like cleaning mode, the level of suction, the amount of water it will use when mopping, and you get to set up a schedule if you want to. For spot mode, you can carry the robot to the mess or use the app or the remote control to manually move it to the mess, and we'll clean in a circle, gradually making this cleaning area larger. Edge mode will, you guessed it, send it around the edges to clean, and auto mode will have the robot clean anywhere it can, until the battery either gets low or perhaps when it thinks it's gotten everything. When it does, it will auto return to the dock. Let's look closely at some features. It has auto drop detection, so it won't tumble downstairs. Seems to work. The anti-collision will prevent it from ramming into things. Check. Well, mostly check. Overall, it's pretty gentle. If it happens not to detect something, it will bump it. Although I think that one was on purpose. I couldn't test the Google Home integration. I already had the app set up with other devices and it didn't seem to want to play together. But if you follow the instructions, your results may vary and you should be able to control a few aspects of the vacuum with your voice. The remote control is cool. It will let you start it, send it to the dock, pause the cleaning, and a few other modes, uh, increase or decrease suction. And the coolest part, control where it goes a bit like a remote control car with the directional arrows. My kids had a lot of fun with that feature. Oh, I didn't get it. Turn around and have me get it again. The battery life of 150 minutes is on its lowest setting on smooth floors. So you know you won't get all that time during actual use. 
You can put down the magnetic strip to keep it away from stuff you don't want to suck up. It seems to work just fine. It also has a gyroscope and a camera underneath. Together, these two sensors help to keep it going in a straight line when vacuuming, and it uses these two sensors to feed the algorithm that tries to manage a neat pattern around the room. It actually works pretty well. Using these sensors, direction and speed info, it attempts to map the area. Without some of the more advanced sensors, sometimes it will make a map that's pretty close, but other times it gets a bit off. Certainly not as accurate as they show in the advertisements. And my house doesn't look like this. And I do not have a secret tunnel leading somewhere into the bowels of my house. Promise. Considering the sensors it does have, it does a commendable job. Compared to my D-Bot Osmo 920 that uses laser to map the house, the Cybovac is at a tech disadvantage. Keep in mind, the D-Bot costs three times as much. The D-Bot's map is very accurate and is always adjusted in real time as it goes along. All of the D-Bot's movements are calculated and have purpose. It actually knows where it is in the house. In fact, the D-Bot's accurate knowledge of my floor plan and where it is in relation to the kitchen cutlery keeps me up at night. Time the two, and despite the disparity in accuracy and mapping, they actually did the whole first floor in about the same time. 61 minutes for the D-Bot and 64 minutes for the Cybovac. To show how the Cybovac navigates its surroundings, we can use the return to dock mode. Let me show you what I mean. I placed both vacuums aimed at their docks and sent them home at the same time, or close to the same time. The Cybovac immediately starts moving forward while the D-Bot spends a serious chunk of time finding out where it is, or perhaps looking for the nearest exit. Before the D-Bot decided to even move, the Cybovac is docked. The second test is from farther away, not by much, but we are talking about at least two turns. Same thing. Cybovac moves forward while the D-Bot thinks, but D-Bot doesn't take long and is headed to the dock. Cybovac hits a wall and thankfully decides to go left. D-Bot struggles, giving the Cybovac a chance, but then takes the win at the last minute. The Cybovac does eventually get there. Test 3 is across the house, and I'm sure you can guess the winner. Cybovac moves forward, but once D-Bot figures out where it is, it heads straight for its dock. Just to show it's a good sport, the Cybovac even helps the D-Bot up the floor transition. D-Bot's not perfect, but it knows and almost always heads straight where it wants to go. Cybovac is in the office. I'm not knocking it for this. Most vacuums in this price range will just wander around. This one does make a pretty good pattern when vacuuming in auto mode, but once it starts to search for its dock, it oftentimes will mess up its own nice-looking lines with random tracks. It didn't seem to like the transition from my living room to my kitchen either. To be fair, the transition is large, and even the D-Bot has struggled once or twice. But D-Bot figures it out. It's got some programming to help it get a good angle. This one does have programming that tells it to turn around and try again, but it doesn't always help. Thankfully, this is something that could be fixed or improved with updates. It also got stuck under my sofa a few times. It's got a low profile, but only low enough to wedge itself. It also got stuck on these shoes. For the Cybovac E31 to mop, you need to pull out the dustbin and put in the mop container. I assume one would use the magnetic strip to keep it off the carpet when it's mopping. It works, but it could be a bit of a pain unless your whole floor is moppable. You can use the app to change the amount of water that is dispensed. Level 2 seemed to be the sweet spot. The mop does come off pretty easy, so it can be cleaned. Lastly, Let's see how long it will take to collect dust. And by that, I, I mean how much does it suck? I, I mean, is it a good vacuum? To show these robots humans are superior, let's start by checking out each vacuum's spot cleaning abilities. I grabbed 24 pieces of cat food, or the fish-flavored processed corn our cat eats, and placed them in two grids of 12. The third vacuum in our house, since the mess, left its dock and did some vacuuming of her own, postponing the test. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> her ruining my experiment. Once the field was reset, the testing was on. D-Bot does its occasional pauses to process data, or plot the end of the world, and the Cybovac just starts going in circles. The Cybovac is much quieter than the D-Bot, 
and I wouldn't call the debot loud. Both seem to be doing well, but who will win? Let's check the results. So the debot has one and two pieces of corn. The Kaival E31 has. Yeah. I don't see any. Looks like you picked up all of them. Another test is to see how well the vacuum will vacuum my garage floor. It's dirty, it's dusty, it's got stuff lurking in every corner, and maybe even a spider. How will it do? Uh, will it pick up stuff like this? A leaf. It's really messy around here. A lot of dirt, a lot of debris. Kind of narrow too. So will it be able to pick it up? Also here, my little pad, my mat in my garage on my workbench. Um, will it have any issues getting up there? You can see here it does a decent job of making a good pattern, but you can also see it does a lot of it twice, which it probably thinks is unvacuumed ground. It actually did a pretty good job and got almost everywhere except for here, which was one of the spots I was hoping it would get. It looked like it was going to a few times, but never did. The amount of stuff it picked up was pretty good. And for the final test, how well does it pick up fine dirt off of a carpet? I grabbed one third cup of dirt and spread it out over both areas as evenly as I could and then rub some of it in for good measure. Not super scientific, but it should work. Enter the contenders. Now this test does matter. The D-Bot says it has 1000 PA of suction, uh, atmospheric pressure, and the Cybervac claims to have double the PA at 2200 atmospheric pressures. According to Kaival's own statistic, it should be able to easily pick up more than the D-Bot. I let them go for a minute and a half, Let's see how they did. The Cybervac has a larger piece it missed, but other than that, both carpets look pretty good. Let's check out the dustbins. They look pretty close, but upon further inspection, the D-Bot pile is a little bit bigger. When putting each vacuum's piles in the measuring cup, you can see that the Cybervac did suck up less, even though it should have been able to pick up more. The PA rating only kind of matters, it's only a piece of the equation. Maybe the Cybovac does have that much suction, but suction is only a part of the vacuum's ability to pick up debris. It did well, but it wasn't able to beat another vacuum with half the claimed sucking power. Well, what do you think about this vacuum? I do think it's a very commendable option with good features. This robot vacuum does have some neat tech in it, but if you don't want to pay for some of the latest cutting edge tech, then this does a great job with the features it has. Just don't give too much credence to the suction rating. If you're interested, there's a link in the description. So tell me what you thought of the video. Did it suck? Leave a comment and tell me what part sucked the most. Thanks for watching.